In this video, we'll be going over 8 integrals that have sine cosine. For the first one, we have the integral of sine square x times cosine to the fifth power x. Here's the deal. Pay attention to cosine to the fifth power x. We are going to break this apart. So, we are going to say this is the integral and we have sine square x and we are going to look at this as cosine to the fourth power x times cosine to the first power x. And that's the usual strategy when we are dealing with the product of sine cosine and they have some powers right here. In this case, we save a cosine x factor so we hope to convert the rest right here in terms of just sine x. This right here is sine square x already, so that's good. But this right here, we are going to make a change. And to do so, well, I'm just going to write this down again. This is sine square x. But we can look at the cosine to the fourth power x as cosine square x. And then square. And then this is still cosine x. Why did we do that? Because cosine square x is the same as 1 minus sine square x. So you always want to look at cosine to the second power x. That will be really helpful. So this is the integral, and we have sine square x times. This is 1 minus sine square x. And then we have to raise that to the second power, and then we have the cosine x. So with all this work, we're just trying to get ready. And now we can actually do a u sub. Let u equal sine x. And then you see du is just equal to cosine x dx. That's exactly what we have right here. So this right here is just going to be the integral. And here we have u squared times. This is 1 minus, and this is u squared, and then squared. And this right here is just our du. So we can replace that. No big deal. Yep, just like that. Now for the rest, we just have to do some algebra. So for this right here, let me just open it real quick. This is going to be 1 minus 2 times this times that, which is just uh, 2u squared. And then we add this square, which is u to the fourth power. And then we have the u squared in the front. So all in all, this right here will be the integral. And then we distribute that inside. We have u squared minus 2u to the fourth power, and then plus u to the sixth power, and then du. So now we can just integrate this. So this is going to give us 1 third, and then u to the third power, but u is sine x. So I'm just going to write that down, sine, and then the third power, and then x. Then just continue. Add 1 to the power is 5, divided by that, so we have minus 2 over 5, sine to the fifth power, and then x. And lastly, add 1 to it, and divided by it, which is going to be positive, so I'm just going to put on plus 1 over 7, sine, to the seventh power and an x. Hmm? Just like this, and then we're done. So put on the plus c. This right here will be the first one. For the second question, we have the integral of sine to a third power x over cosine x. So it's a good idea to break this down, right? Sine squared times sine to the first. All right, so let's see. This is sine square x over cosine x. And then we have another sine x. Now. We have a sine factor right here, so that means hopefully we can write this in terms of cosine, and that's actually doable, yeah, because sine square x is just 1 minus cosine square. So this right here is going to give us integral 1 minus cosine square x over, this is cosine x, and then this is sine x dx. We did it. So now we can just do a sub. Let u equal cosine x. Differentiate that real quick, we get du equals negative sine x dx. And now here's the deal. You see that this right here is sine x and this is negative sine x. So what you can do is the following. You can come back here and just multiply this by negative, but another negative on the outside because negative times negative will give you the positive. So it's just a way to remind you that you have to attach a negative right here. That's all. All right, so here we will have this negative, and then we have the integral. 1 minus u squared, so let's put that down. 1 minus u squared over u. So I'm just going to put it as over u here, and then over u here, times this part is just the du, so I'm just going to put that down right here. 
like that. And then of course we can simplify this a little bit. This is minus integral 1 over u minus u in the u world. And now for the first one we will get, we still have the negatives, right? So negative parentheses, first one we get ln absolute value of u, which is going to be cosine x. And then we are going to have minus integrating u, we get one half u squared, and u is cosine x. So we have cosine squared x, like so. And lastly, I will just distribute the negative. So on all, we are looking at negative ln absolute value of cosine x. And if you would like, you can bring the negative to here and make that into 1 over cosine and turn that into secant. But this is totally okay. But anyway, lastly, negative times negative, we have positive and then we have 1 half cosine square x and then plus c. And this is it. For number 3, we have the integral of sine square of 3x. As we can see, we have the even power right here for the sine and there's no cosine to help us out. So we are on our own. No, just kidding. Well, we are kind of, but don't worry, we do have another, we do have another identity that can help us out. And that's this one. We're going to look at sine square theta. Yes, this is the same as 1 minus cosine square theta, but we can also look at this as 1 over 2 times 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. This is the one that's actually going to help us out for that integral. You see, here we have the second power, but here it's only the first power. So this is the way to go. So now, as we can see, this is going to be the following. We are just going to let theta equal the 3x right here. So of course we can just use this identity and let me just first put on the integral sign and then we have the one half and that's just a constant multiple. I can put that in the front and we have the one and then the minus and then cosine to the first power. And here we do two times theta, which is two times three x, and that will give us six x. So that will be the change that we make, and that will be much easier to integrate this. Check this out. Let me just put on the one half all the way in the front, and then put down the parentheses for the result of integration. Integrating y in the x world, we get x. Integrating cosine, we get positive sign. But this is negative, so we bring that down. The input stays the same, still 6x. But we have to divide it by the derivative of 6x, which is 6. And that will just give us 1 over 6 right here. Right? Now we will just multiply in the 1 half. So altogether we have 1 over 2x minus 1 over 12. And then we have sine of 6x. And then we are done. This is it. Okay, for number 4, we'll be integrating cosine x times cosine of 2x. So here's the deal. There is a formula that we can actually change the product of cosine of an angle times cosine of a different angle into sine cosine, things like that. But a better known identity in this case that we we'll use is the double angle identity for cosine. And uh, this is the one that I prefer to use because remember for this, it has three versions. So I will just write that down for you guys. I'm going to keep this cosine x right here, but I'm going to look at cosine of 2x as, well, the first version is cosine squared minus sine squared, but I don't want that. The other version is cosine with a 2 in front and square, and I don't want that. I want this one. I want 1 minus 2 sine squared x. This is the one that I want to use. Why? Because as you can see, we have a cosine factor right here, and this is in terms of sine x. So we can just do a u sub, right? Do u sub let u equal that, which is just sine to the first power x. And then du is going to be cosine x dx. And that's exactly what we have right here. Very nice. So we are looking at the integral of 1 minus 2 u squared, and then we have the du. So now let's go ahead and do that. Integrating 1 in the u world, we get u, and we know u is sine x, so we can write that down. And then integrating this, we get minus 2 over 3. 
U, which is sine, and then we raise that to the third power, and then X, just like this, and then we're done. Put a plus Z, ah, this is it. So I think you will see that if you use the right identity, that the trig integral will be really easy. If you use the wrong identity, of course, sometimes it's going to be making it worse. But this is it. Number five, we are going to integrate sine of 2x over sine x. Again, the angles are different. And here, we are once again dealing with a double angle, but this is for sine. So just remember your identity. In this case, we'll just look at this as 2 sine x times cosine x. That's the double angle identity for sine. And then we still have the denominator sine x. And this is actually really nice because this and that can solve very nicely. So we are looking at the integral of 2 cosine x. And the integral of cosine is positive sine. So this is just going to be 2 positive sine x. And we are done. This is it. Plus c. Yeah. That's it. Okay, for number 6, we will be integrating sine of 5x times cosine of 2x. And even though we have the identity that we usually remember for cosine of 2x, but here we have sine of 5x. So it's going to be, uh, the identity is not going to help us out too much. However, we do have this right here that's going to help us out. The product of sine A and cosine B is equal to all this. So let's go ahead and utilize that. And uh, let's see, we have the integral. And here we have sine of this, which will be the A, and then cosine of that, which is the B. First, we have the one half. We can just put that all the way in the front. And then we have sine. And we have a minus b, which is 3x minus 2x. And that's going to give us, which is 5x minus 2x, which is going to give us 3x. And this is just 5x minus 2x. And we got that. And then we continue. We add sine. And then we do this plus that. And that's going to give us 7x. So here we have the 5x plus 2x. So that's very nice. Because again, this identity is just really useful for this kind of situation. All right, let's see. We have one half all the way in the front. Put on parentheses for the result of integration. Integrating sine, we get negative cosine. So negative cosine here. And then the input is 3x. And divided by 3. Yes. Right here, it's negative cosine, and we have 7x, and here we divide it by 7. All right, so that's pretty much all we have. And perhaps in the end, we'll just, divide, we're just multiply in the 1 over 2. So finally, we have negative 1 over 6, cosine of 3x, and then minus 1 over 14, cosine of 7x. Very nice, huh? And put on the plus C. This is it. Number seven, we have the integral of sine x plus cosine x in the parentheses, and then we have to square that. Don't do anything fancy, just do algebra. Let's just go ahead and multiply this out, and uh, we will get this thing squared, which is sine squared x, plus two times this and that, which is just two sine x, cosine x, and then lastly, we add this thing squared, which is cosine squared x. All right, good. And you know what's better? Have a look. Sine square x plus cosine square x is equal to what? 1. So this right here is just equal to the integral of 1 plus, and now, what's 2 sine x cosine x? Well, that's just the double angle identity for sine. And we just look at it backwards. This right here is just sine of 2x. So that's very nice, huh? So now we can integrate this. Integrating y in the x world, we get x. Integrating sine, we get negative cosine, and this right here stays the same. But the derivative of 2x is a 2, so we will divide it by 2, just like that. And then we're all done. So put on a plus c. This is it. Number 8, we have the integral of 1 over 1 minus cosine square x. Hmm, what should we do? Well, don't worry too much about it, because this right here is nicely equal to sine square x. So we're looking at the integral of 1 over sine square x. 
better yet, this right here is just the integral of cosecant square x. And now, do we know the derivative of a what function? It's equal to negative. It's equal to cosecant square x. Cotangent. If we have cotangent, though, if we have cotangent x, the derivative of that will give us negative cosecant square, though. So don't worry. We are just going to put this down and also a negative right here, and we'll be done. <laughs> so the answer is negative cotangent x plus c. That's it. So hopefully you find this video helpful. If you need more help, you can check out my other video for more practice for integrations. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Let me know. And as always, that's all.